We're going much, much higher. Don't even wait $100, $200. Who cares? Even if it falls, which I doubt, it means nothing in the scheme of things. You're waiting to buy your gold now. What happens when it hits 3000 maybe later this year, early next year? What, are you going to wait for 2700 And while you're waiting for 2700 it goes to 3500 Save yourself some stress. Just buy it right now, right? You're going to get a good buy. Uh, gold is still very cheap. Same with silver, about $29 an ounce. I mean, it is going to blow through 50 I think, like a hot knife through butter when it starts to go up. The precious metal gold has recently found itself in a tight trading range, oscillating between support at $2,500 and resistance at $2,560. This consolidation phase is particularly noteworthy as it has established a solid base at the $2,500 level, which has withstood multiple tests. Peter Schiff, CEO of Euro Pacific Capital, is among the bullish voices in the gold market. He anticipates a significant rise in gold prices and advises investors against waiting for minor dips. Delaying purchases could result in missing out on even higher prices, Schiff warns. His predictions are bold, suggesting gold could reach $3,000 or more in the near term, potentially climbing to $3,500 if investors hesitate too long. Recent market conditions lend credence to these optimistic forecasts. A decline in the U.S. dollar triggered by data indicating a slowdown in inflation has fueled expectations that the Federal Reserve will cut interest rates this year. This economic environment typically favors gold, which is often seen as a hedge against inflation and currency devaluation. However, the gold market is not without its challenges. Despite the favorable macroeconomic backdrop, gold prices remain under pressure due to various factors. These include India's recent reduction in import duties, a persistently strong dollar, and rising bond yields. As a result, analysts are divided on the short-term trajectory of gold prices, with some predicting further declines while others anticipate a rebound. Schiff's bullish outlook extends beyond gold prices. He predicts a severe recession on the horizon, expecting a weaker dollar and rising inflation to further boost gold's appeal. In this scenario, Schiff sees gold mining stocks as undervalued and urges investors to act before prices surge. Before diving into the video, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. If you enjoy the content, show your support by liking the video and commenting below. Talk to the guys again at Shift Gold, and people are still telling me they're waiting for a pullback uh, to buy gold. You're not going to get one. Look, gold can barely get below 2,500. Of course, whenever it does, right, the gold, people in gold stocks panic like it's about to crash. We are holding right near the all-time record highs. Right? Unlike Bitcoin, which has collapsed from its record highs, Real gold is right at the record high, which it's about to you know, launch from, as if that was a, a, a launch pad. We're going much, much higher. Don't even wait $100, $200. Who cares? Even if it falls, which I doubt, it means nothing in the scheme of things. You're waiting to buy your gold now. What happens when it hits 3000 maybe later this year, early next year? What, are you going to wait for 2700 and while you're waiting for 2700 it goes to 3500 Save yourself some stress. Just buy it right now, right? You're going to get a good buy. Uh, gold is still very cheap. Same with silver, about $29 an ounce. I mean, it is going to blow through 50 I think, like a hot knife through butter when it starts to go up. The sentiment is still so bad. You know, every time I, I saw a First Majestic Silver, you know, they, they announced a buy, stock gets hammered. I mean, Anytime a gold company has any kind of news that they're acquiring something or if they miss their earning, they just get taken out to the woodshed because that's how little faith, even the gold bugs who are buying gold stocks, because who else is buying them? Because most investors, the general public, they're not buying gold stocks. The institutions, the hedge funds, no, one, no one's buying these stocks. Right? Now, soon everybody's going to be buying these stocks, but at much, much higher prices. They're not buying them at these prices. Uh, they're going to be buying them at prices that are multiples of where they are right now, which is why I'm telling people, do not wait, right? This is the gift horse that you don't want to look in the mouth. You want to load up on these stocks, just like we've already seen the, the change in the, the momentum stocks, the value stocks, like some of the other stocks that we own, like Danone, uh, a food company hit a 52-week high this week, Singapore Telecom, another stock we have in the portfolio, hit a hit a 52-week high, Vodafone, hit a 52-week high. Uh, I'm looking at, I forget all the different 
stocks. We have some of our, 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 our pharma stocks. I think Glaxo, um, Novartis, I think both of those hit 52-week highs. These defensive kind of names right, are finally really starting to perform. The gold names, they're the most defensive stocks there are. People just don't realize how defensive they are because the risk is inflation. right? It's dollar devaluation. Gold stocks are value and defensive stocks all in one. And the markets, investors have no clue uh, what's going on. We're going into a recession. Recession is going to be bad. And then inflation is going to pick up because the dollar is going to roll over. Gold's going to break out. You know, these gold stocks, again, they are giving these things away. As far as I'm concerned, it's like a free candy in a Cracker Jack box, right? You got to pick these up because the people, Wall Street doesn't get it. They don't understand inflation. They don't know what's about to happen uh, to gold, to the dollar, because the choice that the Fed has to make, again, and this is very important, they have to either allow inflation to run out of control and admit that they can't do anything about it, or the Fed is going to have to do an about face and abruptly start to raise rates after they've been cutting them. And if you think the markets are weak now, Wait till you see what happens when the Fed pulls the rug right out from under them. If the Fed has to turn around and abort a, a cutting cycle when the markets are now pricing it in and pricing in more cuts and say, you know what, we're going to hike rates. And in fact, they're going to go higher than the, where they are now. Right. Peter Schiff notes that despite recent declines in gold stocks, with the GDX dropping 6.5 percent and the more volatile GDXJ falling 8 percent, Gold itself remains close to its all-time high of $2,500, only slipping $30. Schiff emphasizes that analysts continue to be optimistic about gold stocks. According to 88 Wall Street analysts, the 12-month price target for GDXJ is set at an average of $55.60, suggesting a potential 20.97% increase from its current price of $45.96. Forecasts range from a low of $46.93 to a high of $65.71 reflecting a belief in significant upside potential for gold stocks despite recent declines. Let's get back to the video. The gold stocks were also among the weakest stocks uh, of the week and of the day. The GDX was down 6.5% on the week, and the GDXJ, that's the junior gold miners, so they're more volatile, was down 8%. Now, you might think, well, gold must have really got clobbered on the week for the junior gold miners to be down 8%. No, gold barely went down. It was down about eight tenths of 1%. It closed about $2 below 2,500, just about $30 below its all time record high. Yet these stocks got killed. In fact, think about this. In order for the GDXJ to get back to where it was last week at its high, it needs to rally 15% to get back to where it was when gold was 1% higher than it is right now. I mean, that is amazing. That just shows you how scared the uh, gold stock investors are of uh, a weakening economy. Because everybody still believes, oh, if we have a weak economy, right? That, that means that there's going to be no inflation. It's going to crush these gold stocks. The weak economy is what guarantees that high inflation gets much higher. People still don't understand the dynamics of inflation, where it comes from and how it works. But as the economy weakens, we get more money printing. We get more QE. So we're going to have higher inflation and we're going to have a much weaker dollar. And that is going to be very bullish for gold. It's just that these gold stock investors don't understand that yet. But anyway, let me get to the... Uh, jobs numbers, the weakness in the labor market that is prompting the fear. And again, the number was weak, but what the markets are worried about is that it wasn't quite weak enough. There were some aspects of the jobs report that people think were strong, which wasn't even true. Uh, but the, the most people think that, and they think, you know, this shows that things aren't that bad. And so the Fed doesn't have to cut by 50 basis points and the markets are tanking. Oh, and let me you know point out too uh, how much the cryptocurrencies, the, the Bitcoin ETFs were down 10.3% on the week. 
Uh, and the Ether ETFs were down 12%. You know, those Ether ETFs have only been around now for a couple of months. And they're already down 37% from their opening uh, prints. That's a big move. And in fact, I, I, I crunched the numbers a little bit. Since the Bitcoin ETFs were launched in mid-January, if you bought them as soon as they came out, you bought the open, you're still ahead 10%, almost 10% on the year. Yet on the same day that all these 10 Bitcoin ETFs began trading, had you bought a gold ETF instead of the Bitcoin ETF, you'd be up 24% right now. So the people who bought gold ETFs, their gain is 140% higher than the people who bought Bitcoin ETFs. Now, who would have thought that, right? Uh, but this is just the beginning of the unraveling of, of Bitcoin. In fact, Bitcoin earlier uh, today got down to about 52,500. It's bounced back up to close to 54,000 as I'm talking here. And Ethereum got below 2,200. We're almost at the lows that we hit that Sunday night. And in fact, Bitcoin itself got very close to 50,000, but then bounced. I think there's a very good chance that by Monday morning, we're going to be below 50,000 on Bitcoin. And if that's the case, it's going to be a long weekend for the people who own these ETFs because they can't sell right until Monday morning. So if we start to see a big crash over the weekend, they are locked in and they still haven't uh, you know, capitulated yet. We, we have seen net liquidations from the crypto ETFs over the past uh, week, but it's still small compared to the massive inflows that drove Bitcoin higher. Gold is positioned for significant growth, potentially reaching new all-time highs amid ongoing economic uncertainties, inflation concerns, and a weakening U.S. dollar. Silver, which often mirrors gold's movements, also holds promise as a hedge against financial instability. Despite its volatility and recent declines, Bitcoin remains a focal point as a potential store of value, though its performance relative to gold continues to spark debate. As inflation rises, how do you think it will affect gold prices in the coming months? Share your thoughts and questions in the comments below. We appreciate your support. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe for the latest trends and insights and hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. Thank you for watching, and we look forward to seeing you in the following video.